Polyminous logistic regression. Let's talk about a context. I might be interested in predicting whether or not someone, a participant in the study, is a substance user, drug user. And the data that I have are 16-year-olds from the 1980 National Youth Survey. And I have an outcome variable. Is this person a drug user or not? Yes or no? A dichotomous variable right now, two categories. And I have a predictor, exposure to delinquent friends. This is a scale that ranges yeah, from 8 to 40. Higher number means higher exposure to delinquent friends, whatever that meant in 1980. The research question. Does exposure to delinquent friends aid in predicting whether someone will be a drug user? Okay. Hopefully, you might think about tackling this as a logistic regression, the kind that we've just been talking about. So let's change it up a little bit. Previously, I would think about drug user as a variable with two levels, user or non-user, two categories for that variable. Now, if I want to do a finer grained analysis, let me break up the user category into finer grained distinctions. And in this data set, we have alcohol, marijuana, or a whole bunch that are lumped together as hard drugs. In the dichotomous case, we had two groups. One of them is the reference group, say non-users, and one interest group people who are classified as users. In the polynomous case, we still have a reference group, non-users, but now there's more than one. There are several interest groups, alcohol, marijuana, hard drugs in this case. So now our research question is not whether exposure to delinquent friends helps in predicting user or not, a two category variable, but non-user, alcohol user, marijuana user, hard drug user. So to just kind of push this home, previously in a dichotomous or binary case, our outcome variable had two values. That's it. Now we're in the world of a polytomous case. The outcome variable has more than two values. Everyone see the difference? This is key. Let's do or develop polytomous logistic regression. All right, well, let's start with what we know. In dichotomous logistic regression, we have an outcome variable, um, but we don't actually use that as the outcome. We have this whole logit transformation business, odds and probabilities and all that stuff. And on the right-hand side, our regular role of linear function, intercept plus slope times predictor. And this helps us make predictions or classifications into one of our two categories. Okay. So what is polytomous going to do? Well, we still got our reference group. We're going to use the non-users as kind of the baseline or reference group. And now we have three other groups. We've broken user down into these three others. So what we're going to wind up doing is building simultaneously three little logit expressions. There's going to be a little logistic regression looking thing for alcohol use, a little logistic regression looking thing for marijuana use, and a little logistic regression looking thing for hard drug use, each with their own coefficients, intercepts, and slope. This is going to allow us, as we'll see, to make predictions into one of the four categories. Okay. Let me show you some results and we'll step through interpretations. Here is a model where I'm, where I'm considering um, using the predictor exposure to delinquent friends. Um, and there are alternative ways in this case to build the likelihood function. And those different ways basically are differing by a, a, a simple transformation, by a constant kind of transformation. So you might see one software produce one value for the likelihood and chi-square, and with the same data, another software produce another one and think they should be the same. 
There's just different implementations. As long as you stick with the same software, it, it, it's fine. So what I've got here is uh, two different versions. I think, I think this one's SPSS and this one's R by default. I can't remember which one's which. Um, I think this one looks like SPSS though. Uh, so let's just start with that because it's going to wind up being the same story. There's an intercept only model that tries to predict into one of the four categories using no predictors. It's got a negative two log likelihood. There we've got a model that puts in our predictor exposure to delinquent friends. It's got a negative two log likelihood. The chi-square statistic for that test is literally the subtraction between the two. And I got three degrees of freedom. Wait a minute. I put in one predictor. Why are there three degrees of freedom? Three parameters. That's right. This is our model. There are the intercepts. I put in what? A predictor. How many parameters come with that predictor? There's a slope here. There's a slope here. There's a slope here. Three different slopes, even though it's one predictor. Because it's a slope for each of these little mini logistic regression equations. In this case, the chi-square difference is 105.344 with three degrees of freedom. Is that statistically significant? You bet it is. Mm -hmm. I would say, yep, this predictor is doing some work for me. This bottom table is exactly the same kind of information, just the other way of constructing a likelihood. I think you know, the bottom table, I think, is from our software. You can see the likelihoods are different. But when you go to do the subtraction, get the chi-square, it's exactly the same. Three degrees of freedom as before, that hasn't changed. I would, I would reach exactly the same conclusion from this chi-square test. How about parameter estimates? Huh, okay, well I got a little logistic regression equation for alcohol. I got a little logistic regression equation for marijuana. I got a little logistic regression equation um, for hard drugs. Each one has an intercept and a slope. These are the fitted values for the alcohol equation, estimated intercept and slope, for the marijuana equation, estimated intercept and slope, for the hard drugs equation, estimated intercept and slope. It's basically like three times the logistic regression results, estimates, standard errors, test statistic, p-value, exponent to see of the uh, slope to see what's the change in the odds for each additional unit. Just plugging it in, here's the logit expression, alcohol, marijuana, and drugs. There are those values for intercept and slope for each one. I have these three expressions which capture the system of predicting into one of four categories. Each one can be thought of as a difference from the reference group. So this expression here for alcohol is, you tell me the exposure and I'll come up with a predicted probability of being um, in the alcohol group relative to the non-user group. The next expression is, you tell me the exposure, I'll give you the predicted probability for being in the marijuana group as opposed to the non-user group. And then you tell me the exposure, I'll give you the predicted probability of being in the hard drugs group relative to the non-user group. I get all the usual stuff, uh, like walled um, test statistics. Yeah, let's, like, let's do this, like negative 0.346 here divided by 0.097. That would give me a, a Z statistic of 3.561 on the p-value. Okay, if my software calls it a chi-square, they're just taking that ratio and squaring it. I'm calling it a Wald's chi-square. You might not be surprised to learn that we would get a classification table. It's just a little bit more complicated. Uh, now we have four different groups. So I have all the people who actually were in the alcohol user group. How many of them did I predict would be in the alcohol, marijuana, hard drug, and non-user group? 
Of the people in the who are actually marijuana users, how many did I predict were alcohol, marijuana, hard drugs, or non-users? And, and so on. This is just a classification table of what was predicted and what was observed for these cases to try to get a sense of how well we do. I would like to see big numbers along the diagonal. Of the alcohol people, I would like to have predicted that they were alcohol users. Of the marijuana users, I would like to have predicted that they were marijuana users. Of the hard drugs users, I would like to have predicted they're hard drugs users. And of the non-users, I would like to have predicted that they were non-users. These percentages say, of those actual people, how many did we correctly predict? It's not great. We're missing quite a few, aren't we? So how do we actually get these classifications, the predictions? It's got something to do with the logit expressions and what the model says the probability should be, but let's dig in. Let's dig deeper. How do we make a prediction coming out of our model now that has more than two categories? Okay, well let's remind ourselves what we did in dichotomous logistic regression. I would predict someone would be a user, that is, as opposed to a non-user. Our rule in logistic regression was, is the logit greater than zero equivalently, or the odds greater than one equivalently, is the probability greater than 0.5? That's all we needed when we had those two categories. Okay. Now, if I apply that same logic, I might think of myself as saying, well, I will predict someone into the alcohol group if from the logit alcohol equation, the logit is greater than zero, the odds are greater than one, the probability is greater than 0.5. I would predict someone into the marijuana group if from the marijuana equation, the logit is greater than zero, odds greater than one, probability is greater than one, and so on for every group. Right, that may make some sense on the surface, but it's going to run into a problem. What do we do if in each of these expressions we say the probability of being in more than one group is greater than 0.5? So it might be based on someone's exposure to delinquent friends, we say the probability coming out of the logit expression for the alcohol group is greater than 0.5. Predict them as an alcohol user. But if the logit coming out of the marijuana equation is also greater than 0.5, we'd say, no, predict them to be a marijuana user. Well, what should we do? What do you think? Everyone see how this is a problem? When we just have two categories, if one thing coming out of the logit expression is bigger than 0.5, the other one has to be less than 0.5. But that's not the case here. I could have both of I could have more than one being greater than 0.5. And certainly, even without that kind of problem, I could have it where no groups have probability greater than 0.5. It could be like the probability coming out of the logit expression for alcohol is like 0.2, this is 0.3, and this is 0.1. Well, none of them have reached 0.5. What should I do there? We need something more sophisticated. Here's how we do this. We got the logit expressions, got the intercepts and the slopes. So we can start plugging in and seeing what happens. Just say somebody's value on the exposure to delinquent friends uh, measure is 16. If I plug in 16 here, okay, that would give me a logit of 2.534. That's a probability of alcohol user is 0.926. If I plug in 16 here, that would give me a logit for the marijuana equation of 3.114. That's a probability of marijuana use of 0.957. Logit for hard drugs, plugging in 16 here is 2.693. That would give me a probability of 0.937. They're all super high. What do I pick? Pick the biggest. That's what I would classify someone into. 
the highest probability. Take another example. Let's say somebody's exposure to delinquent friends is down around 8. The logit for the alcohol expression, negative two point, uh, 0.234, that comes to a probability value of 0.442. For the marijuana equation, probability is 0.119. For the hard drugs equation, 0.038. None of them are greater than 0.5. What do I do? Oh, where was it? What would I do here? I'd say, I'm not predicting them into either of these. I'm going to predict this person is in the reference group, the non-user. OK, how about this one? Here it's a little more clean cut. If exposure is 11, I'd say, all right, the probability of alcohol use is bigger than 0.5. And you know what? It's bigger than these. So I'm going to predict them into alcohol use. So our rule here is come up with the logit and predicted probabilities. See if any of them are bigger than 0.5. If they're not, predict them into the reference group. If they are bigger than 0.5, pick the biggest one.